All right, back here with Teresa and one of my favorite wines. And I love this because there's not a lot of just go-to, really delicious, not bank, break the bank priced Pinots out there. Right. So, you know, would, would you tell us a little bit about your Russian River selection? And sure. Why is it so good all the time? Yeah, and I love, one, I love our Russian River selection wines because they are affordable and because they're a representation of the Russian River Valley as a whole. And each of the two Russian River selections, the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir that we're talking about now, they contain a number of different vineyards from the different parts of the Russian River Valley. For example, where the winery is located, we're in the Middle Reach. It's the warmer part of the Russian River Valley. As a contrast, you have Green Valley, which is closer to the Pacific Ocean. Just to talk about two, it's a lot cooler there. It's foggier throughout the day. The soil is different. It's sandy. And here, it's warmer during the day, so you get rich, juicy, succulent fruit, softer tannins. And um, again, back to Green Valley, you get something more rustic with a little bit more tannin and earthiness. And when you think about all five neighborhoods and different regions, each one of those contributes something unique to the blend. And that's really what makes it so special and delicious. Very cool. And then when you're starting to craft together the harvest and, you know, I'm sure you probably are doing all the lots separately and yes. I mean, with all the growers, all the fruit coming in, yes. does a single vineyard kind of jump out and say like, I'm going to be a single vineyard or are you looking at, let's build the Russian rivers first, then, I mean, how do you address that? Because I know you make yeah. both. Excellent question. We actually, um, so we decide really from, from when we first start to contract the fruit. So now when yeah. we're starting <laughs> to generate grape contracts, we work with 36 different vineyards. And within those vineyards, we have different sections, right? So yeah, I've been here for almost nine years now. So we have a pretty good idea of which, which components are gonna be Russian River selection and which ones are gonna be vineyard designates. And then when we sit down in the springtime soon to taste blends, we also have an idea. We identify first which are the components of the Russian River Selection blend, which are the bright red fruit um, characteristics, and which ones are the earthy components, which ones are the tannin backbone, which ones are the floral components. And that, that allows us to put together the Russian River Selection blend first. Okay. And then we set aside some components, you know, 100, 200, 300 cases worth of wine for the vineyard designates separately and yeah. after we're done with the blend. You know, with these Russian River selections, you know, may I pour? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on ageability? Like how soon should someone drink this? Hold it. What are your thoughts on that? So what makes our wines special and unique as compared to some of the other, you know, wines that you can get from the Russian River Valley is that we are picking with really vibrant fruit. I'm picking up slightly lower sugars to capture the, a sense of place from each of the different mm -hmm. vineyards, but also to capture natural acidity and really vibrant, lively, jumping out of the glass aromatics yeah. and flavors and youthful tannins, because really those are the components, the anthocyanins, the tannins are really what's gonna help the wine to age for the long term. And we are in California, so the, you do have you know, some of that, that juicy fruit, some of that uh, California typicity that yeah. one would be looking for. But all of those things together really make this an age-worthy wine. Yeah. So I would say this is 2018 and it's drinking beautifully because of where it comes from. But I would say in you know five, seven, ten years, it's still going to be drinking absolutely beautifully. And I've had wines from Gary Farrell from the 80s that are still tasting really beautifully. That's how we're pushing the, the vineyard to express itself in the wine by including more of the, the fruit itself, more of the, the great material. And then... Would you say that's the key, though, is making sure the stems are ripe yes. if you're going to go down the whole cluster path? Yes, for the most part. I have done even, you know, large percentages of whole cluster with green stems as well. Yeah. And it still makes beautiful wines, but that's because I love, I love, I'm yeah. a stem head. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but these wines are not supposed to show like a stem head's wine. They're yeah. just supposed to have, you know, more spice, more tannin, more black tea you know, the, the earthiness that you want from whole cluster inclusion. But um, delicious wine. Um, thank, you. thank you for, you know, crafting yet another super drinkable, super delicious. Appreciate it. You know, Pinot that tastes like Pinot. Thank Bye. you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>